Hi everyone, welcome back to Glitz and Glitter. So today I'm going to do the last two molds that I have here from Into Resin. So we're going to try them out. I know I said I was going to do this one on the last video, turn into a bowl, but because I can't ever get to it early enough in the day to demold it after like five hours, I'm going to pour it the way they sent it, which is kind of good for you to see exactly how this is going to work because this one does come up into the center, kind of rounded. So we're going to pour it that way and see if we can figure this thing out. I'm going to pour it like um, a coaster. And this holds four and a half ounces. It's pretty big. And then this plate that they sent also holds four and a half ounces. So we're going to do both of these today. So I'm not sure if this is going to end up being a long video or not. But before I start, I got some happy mail today. Do you guys remember Ari? I made her a little jar for a surprise for her birthday and mailed it to her. Well, she surprised me today and she mailed me a big box of things that she actually made everything in this box. So I want to say thank you so much, Ari. It is so appreciated. You guys are so wonderful and so sweet and so caring and thoughtful. So I'm going to show everybody what you made, Ari. So first, she made this beautiful blue scrunchie. So like she knows blue is my favorite color. So she made sure everything in this box was blue. So she made this blue scrunchie and I wear scrunchies all the time because my hair is always in a ponytail. So there is that. And then she made me a couple of magnets. She does all kinds of arts and crafts. She's not just resin. So she said in her note to me that she didn't give me any resin because she figured I was sick of it. So this is cool to see some things other than resin. So she made these little um, magnet birds with some feathers and some bling bling on there. And then she made me this headband, which is adorable. Look at that with all the bling on it. So she crochets and it's just so cute. It's so cute. I don't know if it's going to get cold enough here in Florida, but I will definitely keep that ready. These I fell in love with when I pulled them out of the box. You guys, there's two of them, one for peanut and one for panda. And I'm just prepping them before they do their debut. Hang on. These are the cutest little dogs ever. So they are going to go join all my little whoops, my little elk that I have sitting around my computer. So those are so adorable. They are my favorite thing in the entire box. Not that I don't love everything else. And then she also made me another wooden flower. I'm sure she painted and made a magnet out of it. She made me, oh, this is resin. So Ari, you were wrong. There is one little resin bear in there. I'm sure she painted that too. And she also sent me, let's see, I haven't even opened this yet. I just got it. John just bringing boxes into me all the time. Oh, it's a, okay, a bracelet and a set of earrings in blue and white. So pretty. I used to make jewelry, jewelry many years ago. I have not done it for so long. But thank you so much, Ari. I just wanted to give you a shout out. You did not have to reciprocate the gift but it is appreciated and I will always be thinking of you every time I look at these dogs especially and wear the jewelry and look at my refrigerator. So thank you so much. All right, so today we are going to do this kind of similar to the way I did the other two the other day, except that I'm gonna use different colors and I'm gonna put it in the flower differently because I didn't like the way the colors spread out. I mean, they it came out okay, I saved it kind of. Um, but I'm going to do the colors differently. And then this one, I'm going to use mica powders and clear resin. I'm kind of going to pour this one like a geode um, in blue. And this is like a yellowish. It's probably going to turn out a creamy color and a clear. So I'm hoping I get the striations of a geode. I don't know. This is like a complete experiment. So if it turns out good, I'll probably print out a decal for the top of the uh, plate because this can go in like a little plate stand if I like the end result um, or maybe it'll end up on eBay if you guys want it. So the other two coasters by the way are on eBay. This one might end up there too. You guys I can't keep everything. I just can't. I don't have enough space in this place. So we're going to do one at a time. I'm only going to mix up. Let's do this first because it's really easy. I'm going to mix up what did I say? Four and a half ounces. It's four and a half ounces each one. Let me get it mixed up and debubbled, and then we were going to pour our inks down. All 
right, are we ready? I'm going to drip this a little differently. Last time I went inside the petals with a lot of red and orange and yellow. And the red kind of took over the whole thing. Then I had to doctor it at the end. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm just going to kind of do drops. Uh, purple, green, and blue. And I'm hoping it doesn't like completely take over. Purple, green, blue. I could always add more later. That's purple. Let's do green and a blue. That's it. That's all I'm going to do, I think. Well, that's all I plan on doing, put it that way. We'll see how the colors go. I'm just going to pour my resin in. That's it after I get this little piece of fuzz out of here. Okay, that looks good. Bubble free, ready. Let's see what happens. I'm just gonna go eye level and pour. All right, that's it. Um, I'm gonna kind of watch it for a second here. I don't know, I think I'm just gonna leave it. I kind of wish there was more purple at the bottom. You know what? I can add, um, I'm not gonna add anything. I was gonna add some crushed mirror or something. I was actually gonna add the glitter glass, but I think it's gonna float. So I'm not gonna do that. I kind of wanted it in the center. Um, let me think about this. I've got this glitter glass I want to try, but I'm going to put it in my cup. Let me grab a stick. I should grab a little spoon. I'm going to put it in this cup with the rest and see if it floats or if it sinks. I really don't want it to float. I'm not too experienced with this yet because I just got it. I'm just going to look at it in here and see what it looks like it's going to float. It's not like clumping to the bottom. So that's a little sad. Because see that in there? I'm not getting... Maybe I'll do this. I'm not getting a lot of color up to the center of my flower. But it's not like I can't fix it later with those awesome pens somebody mailed me. Let's just do that. Let's just see what happens. I don't do this technique very often. This is like the second time in a year probably. So I always forget what's going to happen. I'm wondering if I should just go get mirror. I should probably leave well enough alone, but I went to get the mirror to see what it looks like, and I think I'm going to try it. I'll do something else with that. I hope I don't ruin it. I'm going to try to just get it right there where there's no color. Hoping it doesn't fall down the flower while it's curing. I might need a little more. I'm probably pushing my luck. All 
right, well, it's done now. All right, well, like I said, can't take it back now. So I'm just going to, this is the back of the coaster. So I guess it doesn't really matter much what this looks like, but I'm just going to give it a little swirl just in case it stays like that. Okay, oops, what's that? Where in the world did that come from? Okay, now I'm gonna mix up four and a half ounces for this one and we'll get it split up between the colors. Are we ready? I've been contemplating how I'm going to pour this. I was going to do like layers, like get it down in there of colors, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna think I'm gonna do a puddle pour. So I've got it split three ways. Here's the two for the color. I've got my clear left over here. So I'm going to do like a puddle pour geode style and hope that it works. Um, yeah. So this is like the nail art. Uh, shimmery type mica powder. I did a demo on it the other day on my alphabet video. So if you haven't seen that video, I tested all kinds of colors. This was one of them that came out really pretty. And I thought, like, it does go darker in the resin, which is really nice, too. I like the colors. And it's got a really pretty shimmer in there. Isn't that gorgeous? So I thought that these two colors might work together. Let me move this. Like a goldish cream with the blue. I don't know, we're gonna find out. Um, I'm just gonna use this stick. And you want enough mica powder. I might even put a little more blue in there so we get the, the reaction from the clear. Let me just put a tiny bit more in there. Because if you don't put enough in, you're not really gonna get much of a reaction. If you put too much in, it's going to be really heavy and not do anything either. So it's kind of like you need a happy medium to get this effect. I don't even know if I'm going to get it because this is like a plate shaped. I've only ever done this in a coaster. So you guys, I'm just experimenting on you because I think you guys enjoy that. So you don't waste your resin doing it. I'll waste mine. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. I hope it works. I really want it to work. I want it to be so pretty that I have to pick a decal to go inside. I don't know that I'm actually going to spend time on my decal right now because I don't want to waste precious moments of my life if I'm not going to use it. So yeah, that's what I'm... This is a more gold in the the resin. So that it should be okay. I don't know. What does blue and gold make combined together? I guess we're gonna find out. Green? We may end up with a green plate. <laughs> oh boy, all right, ready? Let's just puddle pour this. I'm gonna go like blue, yellow, clear, blue, yellow, clear, that's what I'm gonna do. So blue, yellow, Oh, I see my guy didn't mix in right there. And then clear. Clear is what gives it the striations. So you'd need a clear. And blue. I don't know how many layers. Whatever it takes, it takes. Yellow. Or shall I say gold. Clear. Blue, gold, clear. I'm just going to wait for it to start going down the sides before I continue. This might be pretty, you guys. I don't know. I kind of like what I'm seeing on the sides here. Let me lift up this edge so... The resin is going to flow down there. 
Go on. Okay, let's do, I guess I should make it all go down before I continue. Blue. Now I did mix up five ounces, so yeah, I'm gonna have a little extra, so I don't wanna overdo this, but I do need to end with clear. That should be good. Let's see if it goes down. I did dome it already. Where's my spray? It's right here. Um, yeah, I think I don't see like bubbles along the edge. Don't seem to have any. Oh, I saw some pop out though. There's one, there's one. I don't really want it, well, it's, if it works like a geode, it's all gonna suck to the center. Um, thinking, I'm just gonna drip a little bit of color in the center. Blue and yellow, and hopefully, hopefully it still works the same, even though it's not in the right shape to do that. I don't know. I love trying new things, but I only really love it when they come out right. To me, you see a little floater over here. Now I can't turn the heat mat on with this because I need this to move as long as possible. So I'm not gonna turn the heat mat on as much as I want to. I think I'm going to just swirl that just in case it doesn't move. But I think it will. Okay, it'll be a surprise. It's time to unmold. I am thinking I'm gonna like them. So I did pre-plan that if I did like them, I have the next things ready to go to do with them. So I did print a decal because this looks like it's gonna be good. And then I have some foils over here that I might do to this one. So let's just get them undone and see what we're working with. Now this one is pretty thick. And again, it is concave when you flip it over. Well, let me get this out of the way. So it goes in like that, like I thought it would, but it sits flat, but I just, I don't see it being a coaster, put it that way. I mean, I think it's just a rose because as you can see, it goes down in the center. Now my little mirror pieces did move a little bit, but all in all, I think it looks pretty good. I'm wondering if I back it in white, if that would do anything if you would see the color more. I don't know. What I'm thinking about doing is taking my tacket over and over because it dries clear and tacky. Then I have like a thousand sheets of foils over here. I've had forever. This is about half of them. And they come in all different colors. And I went through and I found this purple color I don't have any gilding glue. I'm not sure the purple's the right choice though. Because you can barely see the purple. Maybe I'll do like a dark blue. I have this blue one too. It's really pretty. Yeah, I think that blue might look better. So I don't have any gilding glue. So I'm gonna use what I have, which is tack it over and over. And I think I'm gonna paint just the very edges instead of painting them with a pen this time. I think I'm gonna paint the very edges with the tacket glue and then press my foil onto there. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with that one. So let's see what we got with the plate, what we got going on. If I can get it, it's really stuck. Let me find something to pry it open with without ruining my mold. 
I mean, it is really suctioned. There we go. All right. Let's get this done. The back looks really pretty. I like that effect that took place. It's not really geode style, but I really like how it turned out. I think I like the back. So if I like the back, how bad could the front be, right? I need to trim that. Other than the mica falling, because I didn't mix it well enough, it's pretty cool. Now I expected this ribbed part on the front, but I'm wrong. It's not there. It's just a plain, a plain plate. I'm not happy with all that mica powder, though. Hmm. Do I continue on? Because I did print a decal that I was going to put right there. Maybe it'll cover most of it up. Let's try it and see what happens. I've already got it printed. Maybe if I, well, it's not going to cover that spot. I actually got it on transfer tape today. The reason being is it's a cheap vinyl, and the cheap vinyls go on it pretty easily. Let me get this off, and then I think I'm just going to... I don't even know that you have to top coat it. I mean, it's really not going to be used for anything. And you could top coat it with epoxy or UV resin to seal it in there, but honestly... I don't think I'm going to use it. Now I can't get the transfer tape off. <laughs> Doesn't it figure? All right, let me carefully pull it off. Whoops. Now it's holding my vinyl too good because it's cheap vinyl, don't you figure? Come on, stay where you're supposed to stay. These little pieces I might just take off. They gave me a problem in the beginning, so I'm just gonna remove that. It's just a decorative piece. I do want the rest of it to work though. Yeah, this is fun. So it's good to have cheap vinyl to get on your transfer tape, but it's not good to have cheap vinyl when you're wanting to get it off the transfer tape. This is my strong grip transfer tape too, so it's definitely holding on tight. This is the other piece I didn't care about. I'm not going to bore you. I will get this off and come back, okay? Well, that took a few minutes, but it did come off. Now, I'm thinking about doing the edge of this the same way as the edge of that, just to give it a little bit more interest. I'm still thinking about if I want to fill that, because there's not a definite circle in here to stop the resin from flowing, so you will see the transition if I fill it. So I'm going to... Do this first, this uh, tacket glue first on both of them and kind of go from there to see what I want to do after. I'm just going to squeeze this in a little container. Just to make it a little easier on me because it is very thick glue. Just a tiny little bit. And I will speed this up for you. All I'm going to do is just kind of take my little paintbrush and go on all the parts that I want to have the, um, the foil stick. Don't necessarily need it thick. I just need something there. All right, let me speed this up for you.
all right they're dry so let's see how this is going to work out i pulled out a few sheets of my blue and let me see i think there's a front and a back maybe not no it doesn't look like it so like i said before i haven't done this before so i'm hoping this glue sticks properly or isn't like too big of a pain to clean up i'm probably gonna get a brush just to brush it all off Yeah, it's going to be real fun, but it looks like it's going to stick. Let me grab a brush. I'm going to try to maneuver it. Maybe I'm not. Okay, I'm just going to probably use a lot of this because it doesn't want to brush into other areas and it's grabbing a hold of my piece of foil not wanting to let it go very easily so maybe gilding glue is better I don't know I don't have anything to compare it to I've never used that before I'm sure a lot of you have and you're all yelling at the tv what I'm doing wrong <laughs> stop yelling at the tv just put it in the comments Not too bad though. It's gonna take some time and clean up. I'm used to that. <laughs> All right, I will speed this up for you again because obviously this is gonna be time consuming. And uh, yeah, I'll be back with the finished product. I got it all on and then it was something to clean that if you guys have a trick let me know because I just took some alcohol and paper towels and it was not fun but I think it turned out well I losing like a lot of this color that's why I'm wondering if I back it in white if that would help I might just do that I'll surprise you if I have another clip after this one that means I'm backing it in white um, this one here, I cleaned up the best that I could. However, what I have learned, if you're going to resin over words like this, do it first. Because now I have like little pieces of silver around all the words. Not that I don't like sparkle, but I like sparkle where I want it and not where I don't want it. So there's the edges of this one. I'm just going to leave this one the way it is. Now I did take a knife like this. I just kind of scraped around the words a little bit to get it out. But I don't see myself, oh see I damaged that too. I don't see myself getting it all off so it's going to be there probably forever. But it's a learning experience. So yeah, if I had to change something I would resin over that and then did the foil because the foil is touching everything and I didn't even get it all off the back but I got a lot of it off so if there's a trick to getting the foil off let me know I would love to know that otherwise it's just patience and time because it comes off it's just patience so if you see the final pictures next that means I didn't back it in white if I come back well you know what happened all right guys see you later have a blessed day bye-bye